Jaguars minus two and a half at the Steelers. A uh, look, we got low totals this week again, 41 and a half. The magic beans here, uh, Alex. The, the the Pittsburgh magic beans keep finding a way to win, but they're road, they're home dogs here. Uh, Jaguars getting a lot of juice as well on FanDuel. You see minus 120, and that total has actually come down to 40 and a half, uh, meaning we don't expect a ton of points. The Steelers are mired in. Mired in Canadian red clay uh, in terms of how they move on offense, just don't do a lot. And you've got, to, but you got a prop on the Jaguar side, right? I do, Brinson. Yeah, I'm going to take a shot at Calvin Ridley here. I think this is a good buy low opportunity for Ridley coming off that one reception, four yard game. Uh, it's kind of been a narrative throughout, you know, Jacksonville's. Uh, side of things for the last few weeks with the spotty production. But yeah, he's obviously just pointing to the team being five and two. It's just natural ebbs and flows. Two things I think is working or three things really working in Ridley's favor this week. For one, I actually think getting Zay Jones back on the field will take some attention away from Ridley, open things up a bit. There's a drastic difference, albeit a small sample, between Ridley's production with Zay Jones on and Zay Jones off the field. So that's something that I think will benefit Ridley. Also, the way they're utilizing Minka Fitzpatrick. Uh, early on in the season, the Steelers were really getting gashed by the run. As a result, they've moved Minka up into the box uh, as a result, we've seen just wide receivers just having massive games vertically uh, against Pittsburgh. So I think with that adjustment being made and Pittsburgh having won as a result, I, I think they're going to kind of stick with Minka playing closer to the line of scrimmage and these two perimeter corners for Pittsburgh uh, at just this stage of their career, I think are really overmatched. And I just think there's some squeaky wheel narrative here with Ridley as well. He's just been just a massive talking point. He's in the contract year. Uh, I just feel like this match – this is a great matchup on paper for him to get going at only 50 yards. I love it as well. Uh, Steelers getting up the third most yards per game in the NFL this season. So checks all the boxes for me here. Yeah, I in this game, and I think I'm having a tough time going which side of the spread here. Yeah. I think I like Pitt. I think I like Pittsburgh, um, but they had 72 net yards before the final three drives. And I think that was in like eight drives. They had 72 net yards. So they did absolutely nothing offensively. Got helped by a short touchdown uh, coming off an interception there. So I don't know that I'm upgrading their offense with, with Deontay Johnson back. It just did not play very well. They're 27th in yards per play now. Jacksonville's defense good versus the run on third down and in the red zone. So, I mean, they could limit them pretty well in this game defensively. Pittsburgh 4-2 and two despite a almost a full yard per play differential to the negative size, 0 0.9 negative yard per play differential. They were been out gained in all four wins. So it really is magic beans. You know, it's, it's, they are, they are not um, out gaining their opponents and they're finding ways to get wins. Uh, their defense been a little bit mediocre. Jacksonville's offense good at avoiding interceptions and sacks. I think they can move it down the field, get some points here, but, but my power rating has value on Pittsburgh. Just, they have a good home field advantage. I think this gap is, is a little bit too big here. And if against the three, I can't ignore the gap. So I'm going to wait for some three, see if three is out there. And at that point I might play Pittsburgh. There are just three current playoff teams with a negative point differential through seven full weeks of the season. Obviously some teams have played six games, some have played seven, uh, but the, uh, Falcons, negative 18. The Buccaneers, negative one. And the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, negative 24 point differential. And they are four and two. I mean, this is like a quintessential. How the hell is this happening? Um, I was on my buddy Bill Barnwell's podcast. You can check that out, uh, the Bill Barnwell Show. We did some fake trades and talked about that. And um, I mentioned how I, I there's nothing I love more than this. Like uh, and CBS has done a great job with it. Like cutting to Matt Canada in the offensive coordinator, like in the coaching booth, and he's like, or, you know, he's up there, and he's like, it's like every time they score, like the first one when they they, they had that long bomb against uh, Baltimore, where, where George Kenny Pickett and George Pickens, and he like people are like he wasn't even happy they scored. It's like he's not he's not not happy. He just can't believe it. He's like, I didn't call that play. How did that happen? He's like, what? He's like, how, how did, how did, he's like, no flags, really? He's like, this is amazing. We're going to win this game and I don't know what I'm doing. And then you saw him again against, um, against the Rams where he's like, he's like, oh, come on, come on. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh, okay, I didn't do that either. But Kenny, great job keeping up, pal. It's like I would watch an entire game of Matt Canada completely perplexed that his team keeps scoring, even though he has nothing to do with the play calls. It is absolutely my favorite thing going in the NFL right now.